I recently completed the restoration of my Mondlecker 95 rifle. The weekend after that video dropped, I was at a gun show and I found this. An M95 bayonet is easy to spot due to the blade. When it's mounted on a rifle like so, the edge is on top. I think the Czechs also made their bayonets like that. Most others have their edge on the bottom. They can also be spotted by the rivets holding on the cross guard, which are proud. And this is a normal M95 bayonet. There's also an NCO version, which has a hooked quillion. Condition wise, this one isn't great, but neither is my rifle. The price reflects that. The edge looks like it's been sharpened. The manufacturer mark should be at the base of the blade here, but I can't make it out. It is missing the catch, the part that holds it onto the rifle's bayonet lug. And the end looks like somebody beat on it, pushing the metal up into the slot. But overall, it's a solid buy for the price I paid, and it gives me a good excuse for a project. Before I make the catch, I need to fit it onto the rifle. And not surprisingly, it's not going onto the bayonet lug. There's a close-up of the problem area. Before I resort to removing material, I'll see if I can push it back down. I have the small vise. I'll put in the spacer block. And then just the pommel of the bayonet, since I don't want to clamp down on the grips. I'll need to use a punch that fits down into the slot. Then I can bring it outside and give it some taps. Not too heavy, but also not too light. And I did change punches to one with a straight end to be able to move it across the slot more than I could with the tapered punch. Test fitting it. It's only going on about halfway. You can see the shinier areas. That's where I was hitting it with the punches. I think it just needs to be smoothed out. So I'll move to the bench vise and get out the files. I'll use a triangular file so I can get closer to the edges. Before I take it out, I'll deburr the end. And then I can test the fit again. This time it goes on all the way. I did have to apply some downward pressure to get the muzzle ring onto the barrel. And it's a nice tight fit even without the catch. You can see through the hole where the catch hooks onto the end of the bayonet lug. Next I'll get started on making that. I pulled out an Argentine bayonet to give an idea of what I'm making. There's two parts, the button or the press stud. Then on the other side is the catch that has an extension that the press stud screws onto. In between them is a spring that biases the catch closed. I dug around in my box of spare parts and found a suitable spring that's just the right size to fit in. And I also found a piece of steel rod to make the catch from. I'll put it in the lathe and then turn down the diameter a bit as a starting point. The stock is too small for the cylindrical part to be centered. Even at the original diameter, the top right corner of the catch would be missing. Now I could have started with a larger diameter bar, but I've been wanting to try a technique that I've seen here on YouTube before. 
I'll start by marking a line. Then I'll open up the chuck until the first jaw drops free. I'll take it out and then turn the scroll inside the chuck one turn and then reinstall the jaw. This will offset the part in the chuck. I'll align it with the mark that I drew. And as the lathe is turned on, you can see the effect. Because this is an interrupted cut, I switch to a high speed steel bit and I'll slowly turn down the diameter. After quite a few light cuts, you can see it starting to take shape. The newly cut surface and the original are coming together, sort of like the center part of a Venn diagram. With the diameter decreasing, I'll switch and cut only half of the length to keep any flexing to a minimum. Almost there. And I can feel it in the hand wheel when it first starts to cut a whole rotation. I'll turn it down further. And add a quick chamfer. And then I can cut threads using a die. This will be how the press that attaches. Then I can turn down the rest of the catch. This is much longer than it needs to be, and with this extra length I can test fit it on the bayonet once it's at the right diameter. Now I can deal with that extra length. Looks like I need to bring the step back a bit. And I'll cut the threads back a bit too. And with that done, I can start shaping the catch so it fits into the cutout and the bayonet. I'll start with the sides and the bottom, cutting them just wider than the diameter I turned. Then I'll cut the top. And 
Instead of filing it to shape by hand, I have a sanding drum attached to a motor. With the bayonet nearby to check the fit every so often, I'll grind it down until it just starts to fit. After all that grinding, it's just starting to fit, but it needs to go in a bit more. Another trip to the sander, and it's a bit closer. And now it's fitting in all the way. But before I can test it on the rifle, I need to grind back the actual catch part just a little bit so it can fit behind the bayonet lug. There's the small relief. And that's enough for the catch to fit behind the lug. The catch also needs an angle cut on its backside, so it will spring out of the way when it's inserted onto the rifle. I just nicked the corner of the sanding drum to see if that's in the right spot. And there's the full cut. To test it on the rifle, I'll put in the spring, a washer, and just a nut as a placeholder. I should just be able to slide the bayonet onto the rifle without working the catch. And that's what I'm after. The angle cut allows the catch to spring open as it passes the bayonet lug. And once it's on all the way, it springs closed, holding it on securely. Now to cut off the excess material, I painted the catch with a sharpie so I can see the line that I'm scratching around it. I'll move to the vise and cut it off. It's rounded, so halfway through I'll flip it and cut from the other end. Then back to the sanding drum to bring it down to the lines that I scribed. I'll test it in the bayonet every so often. I'm looking for it to be flush with the sides of the pommel. Now I'll start on the press stud. Another scrap and piece of steel into the lathe. I'll turn the diameter. When it's close, I can check fit onto the bayonet itself. 
It needs to be a semi-loose fit since it's meant to slide back and forth into the bayonet. Now I'll shape the end. I looked up pictures and the end has a slight taper to it so I'll turn that. before giving the end a dome shape. And then I'll polish out the tool marks. I'll drill out the center. And then I can part it off. With it reversed in the chuck, I'll face the cut end. And use a broken end mill to cut the countersink. This is for the end of the spring to fit into. And it fits right in there. The catch that this threads onto has a small area before its shoulder that the threading die couldn't reach. So I'll drill out the end of the press stud so I can thread on all the way. This will also give a guide for the tap, which I'll use to thread the hole. That's it done. Now I can assemble the catch and the bayonet. I'll get the spring inside the recess on the back of the press stud. Then check to make sure that nothing's binding when it's pressed open. The last thing to do is to cut off the excess. And then file it smooth. And there's a close up of either end. The catch is the largest I've seen on any of my bayonets. It extends all the way across the slot into the middle. Most only go to the edge of the T, about a third of the way across. This gives it a very secure hold when mounted to the rifle, but it necessitates a longer travel for the catch and a press stud that sticks out further than most. As I was making the bayonet catch, I was thinking of simpler ways it could be done. I chose to make it like I did because that's how they were made originally. Alternatively, I could have made the end of the catch like I did, then welded on this extension instead of making them one piece. Or even simpler, I could have made the end of the catch, then instead of the press stud threading onto the extension of the catch, the press stud could have simply been more like a bolt threading into the catch, and if it threads into a blind hole, then it wouldn't be noticeable from the outside. That's just some ideas, maybe for next time, or maybe for someone following along that has more limited tooling. As far as finishing goes, I'm kind of at a loss. Normally I'd rust blue, or since it's a small part, just give it a quick dip into the cold blue, but neither of those would look right. The bayonet is rough, and nothing will make the catch fully blend in. Maybe I can get some tips on how to artificially rust parts from one of those fake restoration videos I've heard about. Or what I'll actually do is to just leave it be and appreciate it for what it is. A part that gives new life, and most importantly, functionality to an old bayonet. 
Thanks for watching.